my goal for 2022 is to wear lashes more. I'm going to get good at this. I do not care. I will not let it defeat me. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today I finally am filming my favorites. These are my drugstore favorites from 2021. And I decided to do it a little different because I did my face with the products that I love. So you'll not only hear me talk about them, but you will actually see them in action. Before we get into this video, if you're new, I would love to have you join the family. So please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you know every time I upload. I'm not gonna keep you guys waiting any longer. My eyes are watering. If you wanna see what products I use to get this look and hear about my favorites for 2021, then stay tuned and keep on watching. So I'll be honest, some of these were hard to pick out because I was just like, I can only pick like a couple of them and then others were no brainers for me. So we're going to start with primers. I have three. Um, one of them's a little different though. So the first one is this Belief Beauty Pretty and Prime Stay Put Makeup Primer. I loved how smoothing this was when I tried it and I thought it paired really well with the foundation, which is also in this video. Um, the second is this Hard Candy Pore Defense Primer Serum. This took me completely by surprise. I found this in a dollar store. I think like a literal like one dollar store. I paid a dollar for this, maybe two, but super inexpensive and does a really good job with blurring. And then this one's a little different. I use it as a primer, but you can also use it as a highlighter. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. Some people have used this as their foundation. I personally can't. Um, but either one of these, I think, are great options. I'm going to use the Hard Candy one today because I haven't used that one in a while. But I remember absolutely loving it and I was reaching for it a lot over the summer. I'm going to go ahead and mix them. So we're going to do all of them. <laughs> I'm going to use the Belief Beauty in the areas where I feel like I need a little more smoothing. And then I'm going to use the Maybelline in the areas that I want to be glowy. I love the Maybelline one because it kind of reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury, the um, Flawless Filter. So this is a inexpensive option if you want to try that out but don't want to spend the money. So all of these I would recommend to anybody. I only have one color corrector. I decided to go with the Black Radiance True Complexion HD Corrector. I like this one a little bit more than I had been using the was it the LA Girl, I believe? I feel like this one's a little bit deeper. It's definitely more of an orange shade, but you can sheer it out so it's not too, too orange, if that makes sense. And I just like the texture of this one a little bit better. It's a little creamier. And when I use these, I just like to let it sit for a little while to let it dry down so that it stays in place when I put my foundation on top of it. I'll go ahead and tell you about the foundations that I picked. The first one, I wasn't really sure if this would be considered drugstore or not, but it's an Ulta. This is the Morphe, which one is this? The Filter Effect Stay Soft Focus Foundation. I literally use this almost anytime I want, just like a quick little bit of coverage, but I want that blurring effect. This stays in the bathroom on my vanity, so I've been using this a lot lately. I also have, of course, the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. I have two shades. I have Deep 510C and Deep 540N. The 510C is lighter, so I went with this one for when I'm this shade, not as tan, and then this one I bought during the summer. I also picked the Maybelline New York this is their, this says 30 hour. This is the Superstay Active Wear. I know they had one that said 24 hours and then they came out with one that said 30 hours. Whatever, no one wears their makeup that long, but I really like the coverage of this. It definitely stays. 
Color's a little off, but I was able to make it work. And then, like I said, I also picked the Believe Beauty Foundation. This is their Skin Finish Foundation. This foundation is so good. They don't have a lot of shades. That's my biggest gripe, and this is not my shade. But love the foundation, and I did do a review of this one earlier in the year, so you can go back and watch that. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Maybelline one today because I think I have videos with the others already. I don't know if I used this one in a video or not, and I don't remember. Like I said, I don't think I did a video with this one. If I did, you get to see it again. I feel like all Maybelline foundations tend to look a little orange on me and I don't love that. But most of the time my foundation is a little off. It's very rare that I have something that matches me perfect. So gratefully I have learned how to make it work. But I mean, as you can see, coverage on this is really good. It dries down and it is a matte foundation, so it is gonna last longer. And I also wanted to use that today because the primers that I used are not really mattifying. I'm gonna add a little bit more just to get a little more coverage. So this is about two pumps. Yeah, I love the coverage of this gorgeous foundation and it definitely wears for a long time. For concealers, this was pretty easy. I decided to go with the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. This is a cult favorite. Everybody compares this to the Shape Tape. I actually have three different shades. These two I mainly use like if I just want to spot cover certain areas and then put powder on. And then this one, the Tan Latte, is extremely light. So I use this one to highlight, but I kind of have to mix them. So. I also picked the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Corrector. I absolutely love this on days. If I'm just wanting to get out the door, look a little more refreshed, my under eyes, I don't really like not covering my under eyes. Like, I think it just makes me look younger. It makes me look more awake. And I absolutely love this one for just, I don't want to be glam. I don't want anything too brightening but I wanna make my under eyes look more even and cover the dark circles. So I use this one for just every day. And then these by e.l.f. I use for more glam. So of course we're gonna use the e.l.f. today. And as you can see, this is super light. So I put a few dots of that and then I come back with a little bit of a darker shade. And you do have to work pretty fast with this because it does dry down. Sometimes I use it by itself. I'm just gonna go in with my brush. And I always like to do this to make sure I get in the corners of my under eye. Most of the time, if I'm using brushes, they are from the drugstore because I don't have a lot of high-end brushes. So I use e.l.f. I use Real Techniques. And I think that's pretty much it. Those are the two that I tend to gravitate towards. Same thing goes with my sponges. So this is a Real technique sponge, and then I also, in my favorites, have my e.l.f. sponge. So very inexpensive, but they work really, really well. Ooh, this is drying already. Told you, you definitely have to work fast. These I would do like one side blended out, the other side blended out. As you can see, this is definitely full coverage, no joke. I'm gonna put a little bit more and then a lot of times with this one too, if I use this and I feel like it's just way too bright, I'll go back over it with my foundation brush just to further blend it, but also to help blend the color a little bit more. For setting powder, I also went with this Black Radiance True Complexion Loose Setting Powder. I have this one and then I also have the e.l.f. one and for certain, was it e.l.f. or Wet and Wet n Wild? I have the Wet n Wild one and I felt like the Wet n Wild one kind of made me look, I don't know, like I just didn't like how it set. I felt like it kind of settled into my lines and it just did not look good on me. So once I realized that I was having issues with that one, I just picked this one and stayed with it. I know that the Maybelline loose powder is also really good, but I don't have that one in a shade that I can use for setting under my eyes. I've used it for my face, but not for setting my under eyes. So. 
I've heard people recommend that, but I can't speak for it myself because I hadn't tried it yet. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it is all of a sudden pouring here. So another product I like to use for under my eyes, but it's also a face palette, is this NYX Three Steps to Sculpt. This has been one of my favorites for a while now. I think it's hard to find. I've seen it, I believe in Target or Walmart, one of the two, but this i can use every single one of these shades and i absolutely love it so i think this is great if you're looking for something to travel with it's not expensive the highlighter is really pretty the contour works this shade very brightening so this is a great all-in-one and i used all three of them all the time for face powders this has been one of my favorites i have a few but i always go back to this one this is the l'oreal infallible fresh wear I love this foundation. I think I had it in my last year's favorites, so I didn't want to include it again, but this powder, I just think looks really good. It doesn't make you look dry or make your skin look cakey or anything like that. It is full coverage, so I do use it very lightly if I'm setting my makeup like today. But yeah, I absolutely love this powder. I think I have two shades of this one. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you the color of this. This one is 365 Copper. I didn't tell you the shades of anything. For contour, like I said, I included this for a reason because all in one, absolutely love this shade to contour with. I also love using this Juvia's Place bronzer. This is the bronzed, what is this called? Bronzer palette. Um, this one has two shades in it. So one's a bronzer, the other one is a contour they're both bronzers but i use one to contour and one to bronze this shade is so deep and it's very intimidating in the pan but it does take some building up when you put them on so it's not like super pigmented to where you have to be scared of it so i'm gonna go in with the nyx one first and then probably bronze with the other the nyx one is also really good not too intimidating as you can see, it's sculpting a little bit, but it does not look crazy. So you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to show you the other one too while we have it here. So I'm going to go in with the dark one. As you can see, a lot darker. And I mean, I'm just barely tapping my brush in there. So you do not have to be super heavy handed with it at all. And then I'm going to go in with my bronzer brush. I'm gonna go in with the lighter shade and just help to blend all that together. I also wanted to include one more powder. This was sitting under my blush. This one is the Milani Translucent Light to Medium Make It Last Setting Powder. I got this this summer, I believe, and first time I used it, it reminded me of the Sephora powder, their translucent powder, and I absolutely love that one. That's in my upcoming high-end favorites video. So if you're looking for a good alternative to that one that doesn't cost as much, Milani is always having a sale on their website, or if you can find this in Ulta, you normally can, you can use your coupon on that one. For blush, I was able to narrow it down to three. Of course, I had to include Milani. I love their blushes. They are very smooth. The finish is so gorgeous. They have the ones that have a little more shimmer in them, but then this one I picked up this summer, and I think this one's called Coco Felicita. I think this one is still available. I'm not sure. I don't think it was limited edition, but absolutely love the shade of this one. It is a kind of bronzy terracotta color, and I love shades like this for more neutral looks. Of course, I also love their cream blushes. I have so many shades of these. I went nuts when they had a sale over the summer. So this one is in Nude Kiss, also very nude, very pretty shade. And then last but not least, I still love, I think this was in my favorites last year. This is the e.l.f. Primer Infused Blush. This one is in the shade Always Spicy. You see a trend, this is the shade that I tend to go for whenever I just want something that is like, no question, it'll match with anything. So any of Milani's blushes or e.l.f.'s blushes are really pretty. I'm gonna use the Milani Cream Blush just because I haven't used this in a while. And because my face is so matte. And I think this is pretty. It's not picking up my foundation or anything like that. 
and I'm just gonna go over it a tiny bit with my sponge just to press it in and then I'm gonna set that just because I want to use another blush with the elf Ooh, that's a lot of blush <laughs> Y'all know me, if you've watched my videos for a while now, I tend to be a little heavy handed with blush. So when that happens, I just go back with my powder and I go around the edges to help it blend in better. But I love the youthfulness that it gives and just, I love that flush. So I wanted to include this lip product because I should have put this on earlier, but it was in the bottom of the box. This is the Physician's Formula 24 Karat Gold Collagen Lip Serum. I love this. I don't know about this 24 karat gold and all that stuff, but the texture of this is very different. As you can see, I don't even know how to describe this, but I just feel like when I put it on my lips, it stays and it feels so good, so smoothing. And I do feel like it helps to make them look a little plumper. I should have put that on before I started doing my makeup. So if you're looking for, it does not feel like the Laneige lip mask or anything like that. I can't really think of what I could compare this to. It almost kind of feels like a lip oil, but it's not an oil. I don't know. It's a serum, like it says. So it is a little pricey to say it's from the drugstore, but I have not found anything else like this high end or drugstore. So if you're looking for one, check this one out. I'm proud of myself for highlighters. I did not go crazy. I only picked two. The first one is the Milani Baked Highlighter in Champagne d'Oro. Absolutely love this one. The very first time I tried it, thought it was gorgeous. It looks a little more, it's almost like a, it is a champagne, but I feel like it's kind of hard to explain. This is what it looks like. Super blinding, absolutely gorgeous. You can build it up or you can shear it out, but it doesn't emphasize texture or anything like that, which is huge for me. And then I also picked the Revlon Skin Lights Prismatic Highlighter. I know you guys have heard a lot about this one and I was kind of late to this bandwagon, but these actually kind of look similar, a little tiny bit. This one's a little more gold though. And I just rubbed this one all over my hand, so that probably doesn't help. It's a little deeper, a little more gold. So it just depends on what your preference is. I love both of them, so it doesn't really matter so much the shade for me. It's more of how much it emphasizes texture or how much glow I want to have. So as you can see, barely put a little bit. This is the Milani. We'll use the other one on the other side. I'm going to use the other side of my brush, and I'm going to just show you this is the Revlon. So they're not like super duper different in shade. I don't think it looks like I have two different highlighters on my face, but we'll go ahead and mix them together just so it evens out. But I wanted to show you how they both look. But I, I did not use a lot of this. You can put more. I'm going to put more and it'll be blinding or just a quick little dusting like that and you look lit from within, but this is bling. Brows are pretty easy for me because I like a particular pencil or pen whenever I'm doing my brows. So for my pencil, I picked up the Maybelline Total Temptation Brow Definer. I picked this one up because it does have that bigger pencil on it, which I love for my eyebrows. I don't really like using the super small brush anymore, mainly because my brows are pretty full. So I don't have to do as much as far as filling them in. It's more just giving them a shape. And then when I want to have that more micro bladed kind of bushy look, I absolutely love the Milani Weekend Brow. I've talked about this, comparing it to some of the other high end brow products like this, like the Urban Decay Brow Blade. But this, you have to be careful, use a light hand because this shade Espresso is really dark. So you gotta be careful you don't have sharp, Sharpie brows. So I like to use this one just to go in and kind of give some definition underneath and on top. And then if I wanna fill in any areas 
that are a little more sparse. If I want them just to be like quick and done, I'll use this. If I have a little more time, I will go in with the weekend brow. Look at how dark that is. Like you have to be super careful with this. So that's pretty much it for my brows. I pretty much do them the same every time. I am gonna go back and clean up the bottom a little bit, but I just wanted you to see those two in action. I think they're great. And for how I like to do my brows, this is personally what I consider to be my favorites. I also wanted to mention for brows, I do love this NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. This has always been the one that I've gone to if I wasn't using my Anastasia Beverly Hills clear brow gel. I personally prefer to use a clear gel as opposed to a colored one. Sometimes if I just want to do something quick and I don't feel like actually filling my brows in, I will go in with one, but most of the time this is what I use. For lip liners, I had to include the minted lip liners in this video because they are now sold in Target. So I consider that to be drugstore. They are a little pricier, but they are so good and they have a lot of great nude shades for women of color. So different shades of browns. Of course, it's not just for women of color, but it was definitely made with that in mind. So I love those. I also love the Milani Understatement Lip Liner. Got this this summer. This is in the shade. Most of these are brown or some kind of chocolate. This one's Rich Cocoa. The Minted I have in... Let's see what shades these are because I do have two of them. I have Night and I have Bear. And then I also love NYX lip liners. This one is one of the sharpened ones, but they also have the retractable. This is in the shade Urban Cafe. And then of course I had to include Juvia's Place. Juvia's Place you can get in Ulta. So I wanted to include that because it is on the drugstore side. But if you're in Walmart or Target, these are easier to find. This one is in the shade Cola, but I also have another shade and I can't remember the name of it for the Juvia's Place ones. <laughs> so which one do I wanna to use today? I guess I'm gonna use the Minted. I haven't used this in a while. I've really been grabbing the Milani one a lot because it's right here in my cup whenever I do my makeup. But as you can see, this one is bare. It's not too dark. Very creamy shade and this looks great with a nude lipstick or if you want to go a little darker, you can pick one of the other options. Night is a little bit darker, which is this shade here. And then this is the Milani Rich Cocoa, which is also a little darker. So that one's more brown as well. Love that one. This is the NYX one super creamy i don't love that you have to sharpen it but i think it's worth it for the formula and then this is the juvia's place and that's that shade there so all you can see you can see all of these are some shade of brown that's my preference on lip liners unless i'm doing like a red lip or something like that Another brow product I forgot to mention. This is sitting in my brush cup, which is why I couldn't find it. This is the L'Oreal Micro Ink Pen. This one has the three prongs at the end. So it kind of makes it look like the micro braiding, micro blading, more like hair strokes. Absolutely love this one. You do have to be careful, have a light hand with this one as well. For lipsticks, I don't normally tend to gravitate towards bullet lipsticks anymore. I don't like to have to reapply my makeup. I wanna put it on, I wanna be done, and I don't wanna to have to worry about it. So lips, I have the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink. I have the shade Coco Connoisseur, but I think I also have another one of these in a different shade. Plenty of shades, these stay all day. And then I just recently tried out the Juvia's Place Liquid Lipstick Formula, and I absolutely love it. This one's in the shade Self Love. It is matte but it's not super drying so i love this one especially this shade paired with a brown lip like this gorgeous nude for glosses i have three i had to include pretty sure these were in last year but had to include it again 
Maybelline Lifter Glosses. These are beautiful. They've extended the shade range. So now there are more. I think I have two or three of these. I also recently tried this year the Maybelline Keep It Full Nourishing Lip Plumper. This is a gloss, but it is thick like the Anastasia Beverly Hills glosses and it does help plump. I love these. And then last but not least, Juvia's Place glosses as well. Also thick, very pigmented, so you can wear this by itself. I'm not gonna put my lipstick on yet because I don't know what I'm doing with my eyes. So I wanna make sure that that matches, but we're gonna move on to that now. I wasn't gonna include palettes, but I feel like since I decided to do a full face like this, I need to. So I picked out two brands. So I didn't pick palettes because I'm not about to stress myself out like that. LA Girl, you know, they have some amazing eyeshadow palettes. They have the bigger, let me grab one. All right, so they have the bigger 16 pan. I couldn't remember how many shades were in it. Uh, this is one of my favorites. This is the LA Girl Pro Artistry eyeshadow palette. Absolutely love this one because you can wear it if you want just to have a neutral look. You can do that with the top two rows and then darken it with this black down here, which is really pigmented. Or you can add a pop of color with the shades here. I also love their little nine pan palettes. This one I eyeballed for a while, waited for it to go on sale, and then I finally picked it up because I couldn't stop thinking about it. So LA Girl is a great brand. I'm not picking just one. I also love e.l.f. palettes. I have several of their bigger palettes. I think these are actually all the ones that I have of the bigger ones. And then I also have some of their little quads. Um, I have the Bite Size Jalapeno. I have the mint one as well. These bigger palettes, some of the shades are kind of hit or miss, but like this new classics, absolutely love this one. And then these others have more colors in them. Also, I don't know if you can get the Retro Paradise anymore, but this was one of my favorites because it has nudes in it, like the LA Girl one, but also has pops of color. So if you're not sure, you don't wanna pick up a palette that's just colorful, like this Earth and Ocean one, then you can go for one like this, or even, oh, don't break it, or even the Opposites Attract, which has warms, and then it also has some colorful shades, and it has some cool tones as well. So lots of different options. I think these run around, is it 14 15 dollars something like that i'll put it on the screen but pretty inexpensive for the amount of shadows that you're getting last but not least you guys know i had to include juvia's place shadows are pigmented formula is amazing this is just one of them i have several but they have something for everyone so you can pick up a nude palette uh i believe the warriors palette is her nude one there's also this one. I don't know if you can still get this one. I probably picked the worst one out the drawer, but I love this one because of the greens and the yellows. Plenty to choose from. She has her little quads now. So if you haven't tried Juvia's Place, I don't know where you've been. If you love eyeshadow, you have to. Um, for eyeshadow primer, definitely had to use this CoverGirl Lid Lockup. Love this. Definitely helps your shadows stay in place. And I remember for a while, I was only using this one. I would go between this one and I believe it's my NARS one. This one does offer a little bit of color to help neutralize if you have any darkness, but it's not a lot. So it's not intimidating like the Anastasia Beverly Hills one, which is white. And you have to be careful with how you use that one. Juvia's Place also has some really great eyeshadow primers as well. And they come in different shades, so you can use that. A lot of times I will use a concealer though, especially if I have one that's super light, like the e.l.f. one that I showed you earlier. And also because I'm being lazy and it's just easier to apply that all over my eye and my under eye when I'm using it. But for a specific eyeshadow primer, that's been one of my favorites. I'm gonna go ahead and use this LA Girl palette today, mainly because I know this one's easy to find and it is inexpensive. I think this one's around $15 as well. But we're just gonna do a quick little neutral look, nothing crazy.
I'm using the shade right here. I'm just like in a zone right now. <laughs> this one is called Savvy. I am so tempted to go into a color, but I'm gonna behave. I'm gonna go in with Zeal, which is this kind of bronzy shade up here. And I'm gonna put that all over my lid. Whoa. Ooh, I hope this doesn't have a lot of fallout. But I mean, just look at the pigment. Oh, it's falling out on my face. I'm gonna put some powder under my eyes before we have a huge catastrophe. But you know, if the color comes off like this with a brush, just imagine how much payoff you're gonna get with your finger. Matter of fact, I will go ahead and show you. These are so smooth. Look at the shine on that. That looks so foiled and so pretty. So I'm gonna go in with the darker brown called Brilliance and just same old, same old, darken up my outer V. That's such a gorgeous chocolate brown and there is a black in here, which I love because I feel like you can just go any direction to make this a neutral look or super dark with the black. Now I'm just gonna take a smaller brush and smoke out my bottom lash line a little bit with that same dark brown shade. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of that gold shade and just go right in the inner corner. For eyeliner, I have two favorites. One is by NYX. This is the Epic Ink Liner. I have this one in black. It is a brush tip, which I love. And then also, this was last year's favorite. It's gonna be this one again. This is the Physician's Formula Eye Booster. This one is the waterproof one. There is another one that is not waterproof. I don't really tend to use pencils on my eyes that much. So I don't have one that I could say was a favorite for this year. I'm gonna go ahead and use the NYX one on the other side just so you can see pretty much the same thing. I think the NYX one is a little less expensive. Physician's Formula is pretty expensive for the drugstore. For mascara, I have to absolutely love both of these. I personally look for mascaras that are going to lengthen and give me some volume. My lashes are already pretty curly. I don't have to curl them. I picked the Milani Highly Rated. This one kind of reminds me of the Fenty Full Frontal. Absolutely love it. Also reminds me of my Pat McGrath, which is one of my high-end favorites. And then I love the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High. This one makes my lashes look so long. It is a bit of a wetter formula, which I don't love. And it also has the kind of plastic bristles. I think I'm gonna love this one more when it dries out a little bit, but this one just makes my eyelashes look so long. The Milani is kind of just like an all-in-one and it's your standard bristle brush. It's not plastic, so. I go between these two a lot, but for me to find a mascara, I want to be able to know like very first time I try it, as soon as I put it on, I see an immediate difference and it doesn't take a million coats to do it. I'm not one who, tend to, who tends to use more than one mascara, like I just put one on and I go, but this is just to show you guys using both of them. So now we can move to lips. Go ahead and finish that. Since I did do a pretty neutral-ish look, which color do I wanna use? I'm gonna go ahead and use this Maybelline. Ooh, 
that is a little more red than I thought it was going to be, but because my eyeshadow isn't too, too, I think it goes well with this look, actually, so make sure I don't have nothing on my teeth. And then we'll go ahead and use a gloss just because, do we want to use the plumper? Or do we want to use, let's use the Juvia's Place because I feel like this one's a little more neutral. Lashes. I wasn't going to do lashes, but we're going to do some lashes because I got to include them. My favorites are either Ardell or Kiss. I don't even know if there's any other lash brands. <laughs> Probably, but my favorites are Wispy. They're not too thick, or if they're thick, they're not long. So one of my favorites is the Kiss So Wispy Number no. Ones. These are pretty long, but they are not super thick. So I can deal with that. And then in the Ardell brand, I like the 259s and then also their Remy lashes. These are the 781s. Similar style, as you can see, I tend to like the same thing, so not much difference there but these two brands you cannot go wrong with and then for lash glue i love still love this eyelor london 18 hour lash glue this is clear and latex free i tend to use a clear lash glue because a lot of times i will mess up on my application so i don't want to use a black that ends up messing up my eyeshadow so i'm gonna go ahead and put which ones do we want to use we're going to go with these 259s today. So I'm going to put these on and then I'm going to come back and give you a roundup of everything. But yeah, this is pretty much the final look. Absolutely love it. You could have went any way with the eyeshadow colors, but I decided to keep it pretty nude. This lip is going to last all day because the Maybelline ink does not budge. So that's why I wanted to put a gloss on top so it doesn't dry my lips out. But with the serum I used, that wouldn't have happened anyway. So I'm going to finish my lashes and I'll be back. All right, to finish everything off, I forgot to include my favorite setting spray, my new favorite setting spray. This is the e.l.f. Stay All Night Micro Fine Setting Mist. Y'all know how I go crazy about the misters and how they feel like it's like it's too much. They spray too hard and I hate them. But this one, look at that. Fine, fine, fine. Thank you, Elf, for getting this right, because for whatever reason, a lot of brands can't. So that is it for this look. These lashes are freaking gorgeous. I love how they're like tapered, but at the same time, they're kind of wispy. I feel like my inner corner is not sticking. Story of my life. My goal for 2022 is to wear lashes more. I'm going to get good at this. I do not care. I will not let it defeat me. This is the final look. Everything looks great. A little dark, but we knew that was going to happen because that tends to happen all the time. So comment below. Let me know if any of these products are your favorites. I'm going to list them because I didn't say the names of the shades for a lot of stuff in the beginning. I was just excited to be filming and showing you guys my favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, I hope you hit that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video. Bye.